Hi, my name is Dr. Matt Hammett, and here's what we're going to talk about today. How the non-surgical spinal decompression machine works. Why we decided to go with the particular model we did. What are the benefits of it? And who can use it and who can't? Fair enough? Well, what we found over the last 20 years of taking care of patients, and what we found, my wife and I, was that we were really good from a chiropractic perspective. We were really good at correcting spinal subluxations or misalignments with chiropractic care. We were terrific at correcting curves, you know, fixing a scoliosis and bad posture. But when it came to a degenerative disc, sometimes we would have a patient who, you know, would ask us, can we regenerate the disc? And sometimes they did and sometimes they didn't. So again, when it came to rebuilding or rehydrating a disc, well, it was difficult to get results. And over and over, I would look at somebody's x-rays. I'd look at an x-ray of a neck, an x-ray of the lower back, and I could see that they have degenerative disc disease at certain levels. And I know how important it is to have that normal spacing in the disc and how healthy it is to keep your nervous system healthy by having that space between the vertebrae normal so the nerve roots aren't negatively impacted and thereby not getting the nerve signal to the cells, to the tissues, to the organs of the body, causing a dysfunction to those cells, tissues, and organs. And patients would ask, okay, after chiropractic care, am I going to have a thick disc again? You know, one that's regenerated and rehydrating again? And I would say what we were taught to say in chiropractic school, and that is, who knows? We knew that we could correct a curvature. We knew I could get a high pelvis to level out again. We knew I could get movement and motion back in the vertebrae again. We knew we could take care of pain very well and get rid of those stiff joints very well. But when it came to actually regenerating the disc, it got very difficult. And of course, the medical community is shaking their heads at me and saying, hey, no kidding. You see, it's just hard for me to agree with the medical community on issues like this because they don't study exercise physiology and nutrition. And most especially, they don't know much about chiropractic. They don't even know about their own emerging fields like mechanobiology, in which scientists, PhDs called mechanobiologists, study this stuff. You see, thanks to the NASA science and the gravity studies, I've learned about something called gravity deprivation syndrome and sitting disease and the effect that has and the impact that has on dehydrating your disc. And I've seen the people who have physically active jobs who don't have sitting disease jobs or they're moving all day long, well, they tended to regenerate their disc with regular chiropractic care. They were actually able to regenerate and rebuild the disc using tiny movement or moving for three minutes every half an hour while they're getting their spine rehab with chiropractic care. Because the purpose of a chiropractic adjustment is to restore motion to a spinal segment and break down scar tissue adhesions in the joint safely and gently and getting the mobility back into the joint. Then they would continue their movement all day long, you know, moving three minutes every half an hour. And that was thanks to those gravity studies out of NASA and also out of the NEAT studies at Mayo Clinic which prove the effects of sitting disease, really sedentary disease, stillness, immobility diseases as I define it, not moving eight to 10 miles a day like our ancestors. That all day tiny movement along with the normal mobile healthy functioning spine goes through that segmental spinal range motion is a good key to good health. So I call that for short tiny movement, the tiny all day movement between spinal joints well, it uses a process called mechanotransduction. And that term, well, it means to say what it says, movement transformed into electricity, or movement between spinal joints transforms the mechanical energy of movement, like electricity, into that of a windmill. The nerve signal supplies every tissue, cell, organ, the body, but most especially your brain. But it's a very big deal if you have a severe degenerative disc, and it's causing a tightness to that nerve and it causes a less nerve signal, right? Just disrupting the communication in some way has a real dangerous effect. And this is no longer theoretical conjecture. It's proven thanks to an emerging field called mechanobiology. So if we don't have enough electricity 
or nerve signal going to a cell or going to a tissue or going to your brain or going to an organ, that nerve signaling, that diminished nerve signaling always causes malfunction. So a tiny all-day movement, that's the basic science that actually stimulates new cartilage cells in the vertebral disc. But some people's disc, well, they've lost its normal hydrostatic mechanism. So if you think of your disc like a sponge, you squeeze a sponge, the water goes into it. You let go of that sponge, the water goes out of it. So your disc acts like a shock absorber or a strut in a car. But when it wears out, does that mean it's not capable of rebuilding again? Does that mean it's not capable of rebuilding and rehydrating again? So it just degenerates, it shrinks, the spacing gets less, bone spurs develop as a result, nerve tissue is irritated, and that nerve signaling is not sufficiently supplying an organ or a cell or a tissue of your brain. We know that after 30 minutes of not moving, gray matter lesions form in your brain and our blood chemistry becomes pre-diabetic, like that of an astronaut in space without gravity. And what does the medical community teach about this? What do they teach about can you regenerate a disc? The short answer they say is no. And we know that that's wrong because often my patients with chiropractic care and tiny movement that all day long, we're actually starting to regenerate and regrow and rehydrate the invertebral disc. And we know this because I take x-rays and often confirm it. And of course, as we get older, it becomes more difficult. I've only seen it happen a couple of times over the age of 60 with chiropractic care and tiny all day movement. So, but I know chiropractic care works to regenerate the disc. My patients know that it works but not everybody gets the same results. Yes, there's a nutritional component to it, and there's a movement nutritional component to it. And then there's a hydrostatic mechanism that must be repaired and rebuilt in order to stimulate new osteoblast cell or new cartilage in the disc. And that's what we found non-surgical spinal decompression actually does that. So long a disc that is degenerated has not reached over 40% of what is termed desiccated or dehydrated. Again, this is why it's more difficult than all the years. So we decompress the spine with around 20 sessions of non-surgical spinal decompression therapy. And that rebuilds the cartilage again and actually restores that hydrostatic mechanism that's been damaged from immobility like sitting disease or injury. And we found studies before and after MRI studies that confirm around 70% of patients rebuild their disc with chiropractic care and non-surgical spinal decompression. Now, I mentioned it's harder the older you get. Actually, aging doesn't cause the problem. That's misunderstood or simply a flat-out lie. Chronological aging does not cause the problem. Biological aging due to toxins, due to immobility, due to injury, environmental stresses, not getting your 15,000 steps per day, and that causes the problem in the hydrostatic mechanism because you are what you eat and your tissues adapt and heal and build and decay to how well and how often you move all day long. See, if you've never heard of spinal hygiene and that a chiropractor cares for it, prevents issues in your back and health, don't worry, it's just like the 17th century when dentistry first took off. People need to adapt proper spinal hygienic practice. Due to our sedentary lifestyle, just like lifetime maintenance for our teeth by a doctor of dentistry with lifetime oral hygiene, which was required for modern humans due to our newer sugar-laced diet, where we went from one pound of sugar to over 150 pounds of sugar annually, where we went from moving or walking, which promotes that spinal motion eight to 10 miles a day to little or none at all. And as a modern civilization, you know, we have that mismatch in our genes. Our inner aborigine requires that movement to generate that power. See, if you don't use it, you lose it. Or if you injure it and don't repair it, you lose it. Get it? So spinal decompression, it decompresses the spinal joints and it helps restore that mechanism so that your cartilage has the ability to repair and rebuild and rehydrate itself. But best of all, it's 100% natural, safe, and effective. See, non-surgical spinal decompression has a higher percentage of regenerating and rehydrating and rebuilding the disc, studies found. In the cases of rebuilding a degenerative disc, 
it was like in the 70th percentile compared to not using the decompression machine and only getting chiropractic care. So, of course, actually healing a herniated disc was more like 80 to 90 percent healing rate from decompressing it. That was reported in John Hopkins University, Stanford, and Mayo Clinics. And long term studies, if you don't re injure it, that percentage of healing is over 73 percent. So, yes, it's a long term solution. So now that we're repairing and rebuilding that hydrostatic mechanism, that nucleus propulsus is that center part that acts like a bearing in the disc. And certainly if you have a herniated disc, well, it's going to pull that nucleus content back into the disc. And the prescription of tiny movement along with the right nutrition, right, where we actually heal the annular fibers, those 80 ligamentous rings around the disc. Decompressing the spine along with chiropractic adjustment actually heals it naturally that restoration and normal movement of the spine. Remember, chiropractic adjustment restores that segmental motion by breaking down scar tissue adhesions. And the decompression restores that hydrostatic mechanism in the disc so the nutrients can flow into the tissues, feeding the tissues, and healing them. In other words, this is no band-aid approach. We're not just fixing pain. We're actually fixing and rebuilding disc and joints in your spine thereby restoring the function of your nervous system and everything it does for the body. Of course, we're assuming nature is on our side. The biological age and extent of the energy and nutritional and toxics plays a role. Because the normal movement of the spine, that power generated to the brain and the body, that's the mechanism that draws the nutrition into that nucleus and to the fibers that actually heal, stimulate, and regenerate this tissue. Yes, you have to have the nutrition from your diet and from supplements, and we go over that with our patients when they begin care. And you may go deep as you want in that education. I've completed over 200 Facebook videos and over 40 hours on my podcast just covering these subjects, and it's all for free. So both by what you eat, what not to eat, and how and when to move and when not to move, it's all covered. Yes, you have to avoid toxins from drugs and chemicals, both from foods and certain medicines. You need to avoid those too. Of course, work with your medical doctor, but steroids, NSAIDs, and opioids, will they actually dehydrate the disc and impair the osteoblast cells from rebuilding your disc tissue. No wonder the medical community believes you can't regenerate and rehydrate a disc. When the tools they are using are destroying the disc long term. And it is nothing to correct the cause of the problem, which we know is from an injury or sinning disease and poor nutrition. Not a lack of steroid, opiate, or antibiotic. Again, this is why they limit how many injections you can have. And yes, the more of this stuff you put in your body, the more long term damage can happen. You see, because if the joints aren't moving appropriately, your cells, tissues, and organs don't readily absorb them. You just pee out those nutrients and that nutrition from food and movement all day long. See, it doesn't get embedded into the disc where it's injured. So, 100 trillion cells in your body have mechanosensitive equipment just to sense the function of the cell. Without movement, cells die, tissues atrophy. It's called apoptosis or cell death. In the case of the disc, it leads to dehydration and desiccation of the disc. In cases of the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, the fascia, it leads to a shortened fiber and atrophy. In the cases of an organ, it leads to shrinking, dysfunction, malfunction, eventual death. You see, motion is more than lotion. Movement is essential to life. So you have to properly restore the motion segments with a trained chiropractor that actually knows how to do that. Not all of us chiropractors know how to do that. And that's a shame. And then you have to draw nutrients with a negative pressure and restore that hydromatic, hydrostatic mechanism if it's so capable. And this is how we rebuild and regenerate the disc. And yes, this decompresses the spine, which helps with things like herniated disc, bulging disc, degenerative disc, and many other neuropathies and other spine-related phenomena. And I'll cover this again in a little bit. In fact, the inventor of the spinal decompression machine. He's a medical doctor, and in one of the studies, MRIs to be used to explain his invention. 
And the fact that it rebuilds and rehydrates the disc comes from an orthopedic doctor who didn't want surgery and used non-surgical spinal decompression. And they took before and after MRIs, proving and showing not only the herniated disc fully restored and healed, but the thickness of the disc actually rebuilt. You can see it on the MRI because of the degenerative disc on a T2 MRI looks black, while a normal healthy disc looks white, right? So it's hydrated. You can see it from going from black to light, and you can see it going from thin space to a thick space. You don't have to be Einstein or even a radiologist to know what just took place. That disc regenerated and it rehydrated while it healed and it closed up the tear in the disc. You know, another thing about that story, I can't reveal this doctor's name, but I've had an orthopedic doctor who has done many multiple back surgeries. He came into our clinic after hours, so no one saw him, to have non-surgical spinal decompression done because he did not want to have back surgery done, right? with his severely herniated disc. So he'd come in after hours because he was afraid a patient might recognize him and would see him coming in for this. And of course, that would probably cause him, cause him to question everything, wouldn't it? And yeah, we were able to get relief for him. To my knowledge, he never got the surgery. So I hope you're paying attention to that fact that two orthopedic doctors who do spinal surgery didn't want to have surgery on their own back. They tried non-surgical spinal decompression and both got results. One of them was published in a journal used by the inventor of the machine. And the other one was someone that I saw as a clinician using a non-surgical spinal decompression approach. One of them allowed himself to be drawn up in research to support the inventor of the machine. The other was not willing to tell anyone about his results and asked me to honor HIPAA by not revealing his name. This is true. He's a well-known surgeon in our area. Watch out. See, I have a short clip from the inventor and images of the before and after MRIs of this doctor, right? I can show it for anyone interested after the talk. Okay, so just to recap. Again, what does the medical community say about a herniated disc or a degenerative disc? They say there's a few other things you can do, right? You can do nothing. You can take a painkiller, you can take an injection or a steroid, you can throw some antibiotics at you, and you can try some physical therapy. And if that doesn't work, there's surgery, right? Where's the chiropractor referral in that process, guys? Does it not bother you? And if that surgery happens to be successful the first time, well, quite often they're going to have to come back for a second surgery, even a third, and even a fourth surgery. So one of the surgeries, they actually cut off part of the disc. Another, they cut off part of the bone, right, out of your spine to, to try to surgically decompress it. And another option is to put an artificial disc in your spine or to fuse your spine together. But what they don't tell you is there's a syndrome. It's actually coded in the manual. It's called failed low back surgery syndrome. I may be biased because I'm a chiropractor and I see a lot of failed low back surgery syndromes that I get pretty upset about it. But they actually have a code for it. Doctors, refer to chiropractors. Let them try natural things. Let them try their non-surgical methods. It's the best thing you can do for your patient. Combine that with the right nutrition. Combine that with the right movement and exercise protocols. Well, you can't go wrong. And it costs nothing of what a surgery costs. And I'm not only talking about the cost financially. What about work and even social costs? You know, mom or dad? It's grumpy all the time. The kid doesn't understand. It's not fair, but they don't understand. Why can't dad play with me anymore? Why doesn't he love me? See, that happens all the time. Not to mention loss of work wages and divorce. That happens afterwards. People tell me these stories and it's heartbreaking. Even if the insurance company pays for the surgery, again, you're out of work for five to six months, and when you return to work, it doesn't guarantee that you're not in pain anymore. Your work may still impair you. You may be left disabled and unable to work. So what is decompression and how does it work? Well, first of all, you need to understand that your spinal joints are pressurized. We live with gravity. In fact, when I was a student, 
we would always get new cadavers in the lab. Off when I would go to cut and open up a new cadaver. <laughs> I know that sounds gross, but bear with me here. <laughs> you got to hear this. So, so as I would open them up, and as I would get closer to the spinal joints, right, sometimes when I made an incision, there'd be a popping sound, you know, a gaseous release. Sometimes a jerking of extremities of the dead body would occur, something out of a horror movie. It's actually called rigor mortis. Nothing to be afraid of. In fact, I had a patient once I was talking about rigor mortis because physiologists will tell you that your state of healthy cell function, your state of healthy body function, your state of healthy spinal function is due to your current state of rigor mortis. The more rigor mortis or stiffness in your back and spinal joints, the closer to death because that diminished and improper nerve signal messes with healthy cell tissue, brain and body function. Even your cardiovascular system is tragically impacted by this. And doctors in the medical community, they never catch this. They never trace that malfunctioning organ by its nerve supply and trace back the major nerve roots to the spinal joint opening and ask the most important question. That if you want life to express in that organ, is the nerve signal firing appropriately? Is the nerve firing sufficient for the normal function of this organ I'm treating? See, NCV studies, they measure motor output of the nerve, the ability to grip and strength of a muscle. They don't have adequate tools in the conventional medical system to understand that nerve signals, the detriment to them, to how well the cell is working or an organ is functioning. See, a CT scan, MRI, or nerve studies done by a medical doctor, they do not measure that. It's done in animal studies, mostly, in an emerging field called mechanobiology. And on humans out of New Zealand, looking at chiropractic care with the novel brain imaging mapping techniques and are highly unique with motion palpation skills and tissue sensing with our hands, an expertise that takes years of clinical experience to master. See, chiropractors, they assess this by checking to make sure that your spinal joints that protect that major nerve root is moving and functioning correctly and that a degenerative disc is not impacting that nerve supply to those tissue cells and organs. Well, after you die, right, morticians do something called rigor mortis breaking where they have to break the bones out of a dead person in order to make them look good in the casket for the showing. Because rigor mortis and stiffness has been so bad that the bones are all deformed, that they have to break the person's limbs and fingers to make them look normal again for the showing. Well, anyway, I had a patient whom I said this to because I wanted to encourage more movement and exercise. Well, she grew up as a good Catholic girl. And she told me that when she was 11 or 12 at the Catholic Church, the school she was at, well, they had a mortician there as well. And she happened to walk by and saw a fresh dead body. If that wasn't freakish enough, <laughs> well, that fresh dead body actually moved a little bit because of rigor mortis. This is a true story. And at the time she heard me talk about this, she's 73 years of age, and said, oh my gosh, all these years I've been devoted to my faith because I saw a dead person move. I was so scared and frightened by that, she said. I never told anyone about it. I thought God was warning me to stay a good Catholic girl. So all of these years, I stayed a good Catholic. I think that's funny. Maybe he was. <laughs> so we want to take pressure off the spine so that the disc can expand, the nutrients can get into the disc, and restore its function. So let me appeal to some of you who think you can crack your own back. Or you can learn from what to do from this video. They can go out and find a device that will decompress your own spot, right? First of all, I married a chiropractor because I can't adjust myself. And I won't get graphic about a new patient who refused to help who cracked her neck like that and her ear fell in her sternum. She broke her neck and was in a cast for nine months, right? From her waist to her skull, and that's true. I sent her away. No way I can help her. So I know you guys seen all these devices that claim that they do decompression. You can buy these devices on Amazon or on the internet. You know that thing you put around your neck or that, that new pump around your neck and then it's supposed to kind of stretch or they claim decompresses your neck? Well, it doesn't. By the way, 
none of that stuff is actually new. It's been around in different forms for over 100 years. They get clever with the marketing. Remember real trademark cheese? It's not actually real cheese. Marketers do that like ellipsoidal trademark decompression or true trademark decompression. See, for marketing purpose, anyone can take their 510K and trademark any name and advertise that. The FDA F10 doesn't lie. The common name for these devices out there is traction equipment or power traction, not decompression. So in order to approve true untrademarked decompression, you need to have a system, an algorithm that is smart enough to sense changes in body pressure, patient positioning, spinal posture, and it must be able to read radiographic evidence from an x-ray or MRI machine so it knows which angle is pre precisely needs to cue that decompression to the correct area and actually compresses and decompresses and then it de compresses and decompresses the joint. That's what creates that intermittent traction. That's what creates that decompression. Then you need to design a table that helps silence certain muscles while working against gravity. So it's this computer calibration that senses the body, this pumping system that creates the decompression. And most people have no idea how much tension they should be having on their body. So none of these homemade or store-bought versions will work correctly, no matter what trademark they put on it. You also need to understand that pre chiropractic work beforehand to gently mobilize joints, break down scar tissue adhesions, like bodybuilders do when they lift weights, they break down tissue so it can heal and grow and become stronger. So joints can actually move and decompress. That's what we're after. See, So what do people do when they buy these internet magic devices? They keep pumping, they keep pumping, they keep pumping. And they're usually on some sort of pain medication, so they don't feel it properly. And they pump it up until the point where they hurt themselves or injure themselves, even worse, right? Then there was the whole system of strap your feet in and flip yourself upside down. You know that inversion table? So that is another one that works great. Some people say they love it. The problem is most people buy them. They do it twice and they feel like it's more painful on their ankles or they get vertigo. And it's more of a blood rush for them anyway to go upside down and hang there for 20 or 30 minutes. So these devices that claim you're getting decompression, you're not. If anything, you might be getting traction. Yes, traction has its place. Yes, it's therapeutic. And yes, sometimes these devices help stretch and traction tissues and you feel better. But it doesn't pump the disc or fix the hydrostatic mechanism of the disc without true decompression from the KDT Neuroflex table. Traction actually increases the force inside the intradiscal pressure, much like deadlifts do. Decompression actually creates a negative pressure. That's how the vacuum effect is created. So there's older machines. There's non-surgical decompression has been around for a long time. There's some that just have an old traction unit for an old pump or some other version. You know, we said we're going to find the absolute best one. and We ended up with the KDT Neuroflex because in our searching for the best table, we found a collaboration of thousands of doctors using the KDT Neuroflex. They're getting rid of the older tables. They're getting rid of these other tables that are more expensive, and they're putting them on the KDT Neuroflex table. Because, again, it's that collaboration of over 20 to 30 years of decompression experience and thousands of doctors worldwide, they've actually created this amazing table. My wife and I actually went to a seminar because of COVID. Hardly anyone showed up. So I had one on one opportunity to speak directly with the developer of these various decompression machines. Hands down, the KDT Neuroflex won out. You know, as a doctor on myself, I've used the DRX 9000 table on patients for three years. I've used a Vax D table and I've used a spinal aid table on my patients for three additional years. These are the most popular tables that are out there. And then I walked away from the decompression world because of various issues with research, claims being made by doctors in the field, and other pitfalls with each of these devices and tables. Well, the new KDT system takes all the strengths from all of those great tables, and it gets rid of all the bad things. And what we have left is the KDT Neuroflex decompression table, and this thing's amazing. It does it all. 
It's the Swiss Army knife of decompression. And now I'm back doing decompression for my patients, and I'm stoked about it. I'm getting results I never would have gotten with the other tables on the market, for sure. So what was one of the major pitfalls from the other tables, right? Well, it makes no sense to decompress only in the face down position or the face up position. See, there are categories during my examination to choose how exactly to place the position and how much pressure is needed per patient. So one example where a, a face down positioning is incredibly important is in the younger patient population with a herniated disc. Again, because of the gravitational bias in the centralization phenomena with the posterior lateral disc herniation. What did I just say? Sorry, dude, sorry. It's more effective, if possible, when, when you're young to get into the face down position versus putting everybody on their back again because of that gravity, right? You want, instead of going, you want to go with gravity instead of against it. So if you can lay on your stomach for 30 minutes, that means you have a posterior lateral herniation with an extension directional preference. So I'm, I'm probably going to lay you on your stomach in that case. So just remember, it doesn't mean that laying everyone on their stomach is the best. No, that's not what I'm saying. The doctor needs to determine which is the best way for you to lay, and that's based on the type of injury and the chiropractic examination and radiology. It's also based on what we call a synergy response decompression, which is a multifocal application. You see, the table's just a tool. You're buying the doctor's expertise and experience, not the table. The doctor has to determine what category you are, and this is based on the KDT Neuroflex table. Again, based on examination and radiographic studies. There are eight different applications to consider. We also have to consider when it's appropriate to begin using the decompression table. For example, we need to look at the amount of stiffness or rigor mortis of your spine and tissues. Do we need chiropractic first to restore normal range of motion and engage the hydrostatic mechanism within the disc so that when we do decompression, it's possible? So again, what is decompression? Well, here's the wordy definition. It's based on axial traction with the attention of decompressing the compressed structure, namely a disc to enhance the healing, promote diffusion and osmosis, to reduce outer annular protrusions, to reduce nerve disc impingement, to modulate mechanoreceptors and reduce muscular tonicity and foster directional preference while providing a pain relief. Say what? So we needed a table with superior comfort and the versatility in the face down or face up posture. That's why it's called Neuroflex. So you can open the neuroforamen and take pressure off the nerve root from that herniated disc. Also having the peripheralization of leg pain and the calf pain and have it centralized and localized into the origin of pain, which is the lower back. So this happens just by positioning with this table, even before we distract with the computer force protocols. So it's called directional preference positioning. And it's the only system where we can put patients into multiple positions, making them comfortable with less pain, less symptoms, before we even create the decompression forces. So the actual distraction of the table needs to happen right where it needs to be. So if it's an L4, an L5, a C5, so if you lock in correctly to give you that distraction at the correct level you're targeting, and it gives you that pivot, that McKenzie extension, directly at the lumbar spine or in the flexion position, it's very unique to the system, we create a vacuum effect by a negative pressure created within the disc. And I like to think of it like astronauts in space without gravity, only we create a vacuum effect. It's like putting your neck or lower back in outer space in a gravity-free environment for a few minutes. See, in space, quick atrophy of virtually every major system in the body occurs. Imagine if we could use that science to our advantage and create an atrophy of a herniated disc or shrink up scar tissue to open up a foramen or to free up stenosis. And that's exactly what we're doing. Only you don't have to travel to the moon. You know, in studies with animals, 
There's a suggestion that under these decompressive forces, fiber collagenization takes place, or the replacement of tissues and synthesis of collagen takes place. Type 1, 2, and 3 collagen can be laid down across the annular fissures within the disc, and a quick and rapid healing takes place because of the forces being created by that decompression table. So it triggers disc osmosis, and it reduces nerve and disc impingement by opening up the neural frame and modulating those mechanoreceptors that provide pain relief. That is to say, if there is tears in the disc, there is healing binding ability by the body, much like binding ability of a cut, and the blood is stopped directly by placing pressure on the wound. Same phenomena is working while you're on the KDT decompression table. So decompression causes osmosis, or the movement of fluid in and out of the end plate within the disc to promote healing, much like when you grab your arm after you cut it to pressurize the cut to cause the body to clot the blood and stop the bleeding. The decompression forces does this to the disc while you're on the table. It's quite therapeutic. No at-home mechanism or gimmick can achieve this. Negative pressure and the vacuum effect is only achieved here in our clinic with the use of the KDT Neuroflex decompression table. Now, what can happen when we do this? One, we're trying to enhance healing, right? That's the number one thing we're trying to do with all of our interventions in the clinic is to promote a healing effect. See, when it comes to the disc and decompression, we're trying to promote diffusion by the movement of the fluids from the surrounding body into the disc. And the body does not have vascularity entering into the disc after around the age of 12. So all the nutrients, oxygenation, and blood sugar molecules, and the movement of waste products has to be done through diffusion or osmosis. So in effect, we're increasing speed and the directed movement of these fluids by the use of our decompression table that pulls at the pelvis and then stretches the spine or in the cervical spine, it pulls at the skull and it stretches the spine. That's we achieve decompression. This effect can be described as the disc actually regenerating itself while under this decompressive forces. You know, an earlier study in spine, 1989, decompression performed in a CAT scan. It proved decompression of the neural structures does take place. And it also proved reduction in size of herniations with reduced pain it showed a 93% success rate of those patients who were decompressed. Later studies provided on CT provided the same. This decompresses, the frame enlarges, this herniation material is reduced. So how long does it take? Many current MRI studies, science shows around six to eight weeks of disc herniation reduction. So again, this is a machine that you essentially lie on and you wear a harness. And I'm going to show you what the harness looks like. And you put it around your spine. And it locks you in and it pulls up on your pelvis and your spine. But it locks the rest of your body into place. So it essentially creates that decompression and motion on the disc. Here's the, the next thing. The cool about, part about all of this is most decompression machines. They put a belt on, they have a harness on, they're going to pull in the entire spine. The problem is they're not specifying which disc is being affected. It's just a generalized point. So if we want to make sure that we can say if there's an L5 herniation, we can treat it specifically. And some machines use a cookie cutter approach and they build it into the machine a way to target this. Well, the big problem is the machine didn't analyze your posture. It didn't read your x-ray or MRI. The machine doesn't understand how to create the correct angle. The doctor needs to make that determination using a spinal movement protocol done from the physical postural exam and radiographic studies done, especially your x-rays or MRIs, analyzed by the doctor. And the table needs to have an infinite number of ways to either elevate or lower itself to identify that correct specific disc level or multiple disc levels for that particular one-of-a-kind person. Again, you're buying the doctor, not the machine. The machine is one tool out of eight other interventions to consider. And this is a big reason that I 
pick this particular model. Because practitioner or user error is a big problem in the world of non-surgical spinal decompression. You need to target, you need to localize, and yes, you should feel the pull. So with this system, we can actually change the angle on the machine by either elevating or lowering your entire lower trunk. And it pulls based on the area of the spine the doctor analyzed from his or her exam and or radiographic studies. Because even in chiropractic school, we would focus for hours and hours and hours on which direction does the spine need to move in to target a specific segmental area of the spine so that we can target individual areas of stress. So I'm going to go through the list of the specific things that non-surgical spinal decompression has been proven to help. And some of the reasons that we use decompression may be due to a pain from a herniated and bulging disc that's more than four weeks old. Pain from a failed back surgery that's more than six months old. So this is another one that I was hearing over and over and over again, where somebody said they had back surgery. The back surgery failed. They were scared to go back and get another one, and they ended up doing the decompression. The only caveat is if you have screws or if you have some specific hardware in your spine, then you can't do it. We can't do the decompression for you. If you've had surgery but there's no screws, you're fine. But if you have screws and fusions or an artificial disc, we can't decompress it. And keep in mind, there's no studies that I know of of a failed low back surgery syndrome. I find it most difficult thing to help, just like the pain doctor, the PTs, and the orthopedics. Personally, I guess it's more of a 50-50 shot. You're not in the 88 to 90 percent rate reported by John Hopkins, Stanford, and Mayo because those cases were for herniated disc, not failed low back surgery. I want to be upfront and very honest about that. We simply don't know unless we try. So the treatment protocol is a minimum of six to eight weeks. And this is what it takes most of the time. So no surgical decompression or non-surgical is a two month, two month program, around 20 visits where you're getting from where you are to where you want to be, where a disc is better. And post decompression care is often needed using our customized that multifocal application, especially chiropractic care. So you can't do the decompression if you're pregnant. Again, a prior lumbar fusion with hardware, metastatic cancer, severe osteoporosis, a severe spondylolisthesis where it's not stable, and I and myself or my wife have our protocol in place that we use to actually determine whether a spondylolisthesis is stable or not. You can't do it for a compression fracture of the lumbar spine below L1. You can't do it if what you have is called a PARS defect, a pathological aortic aneurysm, pelvic or abdominal cancer, disc space infections, severe peripheral neuropathy, paraplegia, or cognitive dysfunction. So here's how it works. There's about 20 visits of non-surgical spinal decompression over around six to eight weeks. And each visit is going to be around 12 to 15 minutes long. Yeah, that's a super excitement to me that this table is that potent and that specific. It takes half the time on this table than most of the other tables out there. And again, that's because that's what the research shows. That's what the research shows has been done for this table, and that's the amount of time that it takes. So we always block 20-minute sessions because it takes time. There are certain things we need to do before, but it's always 8 to 12 minute decompression sessions. Okay, So you lie on the machine and over time it cycles in different pressures, different compression forces, and then it relaxes. Then new decompression forces and then it relaxes. So you'd be laying there hooked on your harness depending on if it's an L5, 4, 3, or C5 and 6 because we can decompress the cervical spine as well. It will lock into that area, decompressing and relaxing that specific area or region. And again, the comparison is, let's say you have a sponge, it's completely squished together, and it's hard, it's lost all its water. Without water, it won't move. That's what happens to a disc when it's degenerated. So if you see any level of arthritis beginning to form on the bone, for example, that means the joint has been stuck in that position. Compression has been closing down in the disc, and then your body begins to develop arthritis, compromising nerve signal, 
and everything it supplies, your brain and your body. So the disc is like a sponge that's been completely squished. It's completely hard. It's lost all of its water. So the only way that you're going to start moving it and you're going to have water available so it can start filling up, and then as you move it, as it gets filled up with the water, you see the sponge begins to expand. The same thing happens with the disc. So if you can get that specific area, if you can expand it, all the fluid goes in here, and then as it relaxes, it pushes the old stuff out, understand? As it opens up and again, it pushes out, and the body begins to rebuild, that decompressive force is created, what they call a plumpness, or a rehydration of the disc. In fact, some scientists were researching it and doing it over and over and over again with people rebuilding their disc and fixing their spines with this way. You know, In time, they're creating a new creation. See, the thought that we can put fake parts in and expect it to work right, it's just never going to happen. Most of those surgeries, even the hip replacements, only last a few years, and then you got to get another one. So the idea that we're going to replace this and put a new one in, it's just never going to happen. Look, God made the body perfect and amazing. And Can we do the best we can with fake joints, fake hips, and fake arms? Of course. But if we can retain what we already have, that's always the best case scenario. Any dentist will tell you, my father-in-law was a dentist over 50 years, my brother-in-law is a dentist, and they would tell you, you need to keep your tooth at its absolute best. Best case scenario is we keep the original one. But we do whatever we can to heal it. Next best scenario is replace it with the fake one. It's the same thing with the disc. If there's a scenario where it actually needs to be replaced, of course, but if there's something that we can do, you know, to just take a disc that's been injured and rehab it, it's been compressed and we, we get the hydration back by decompressing it, doesn't that make more sense? It create more space for the nerve? It will create better range of motion in that area and your body can work better? Not only you fix the disc, you restore the normal nerve supply to whatever tissue, cell, and organ that needs that supply. Your body works right again. So this is why many people taking 3 to 12 prescription medications with the help of their medical doctor were able to get off most of it or not all, or sometimes all the medications. Because while you hear for your severe back or neck pain, we actually rebuild and repair the disc. The spinal segmental joints are restored, and it restores your nervous system function. So your back pain resides, the neuropathy improves, you don't feel the tingle or numbness, and your organs improve. And that there's no longer need for long-term medication use. Remember, we've restored your windmills. The movement of your spine is that power generator through a process called, remember, mechanotransduction, where the movement is created into electricity by way of this nerve signaling. So your improved, your sufficient nerve signaling improves your cell performance, your function, your immunity, and your ability to heal, sleep, digestion, detoxification, tissue repair, strength, and organs get the critical nerve supply to function correctly. Does that not just sound awesome or what? Again, got over 40 hours of podcast time devoted to this stuff and 200 videos on Facebook teaching about these things. It's all for free. Check them out. So we always do 20 visits, but within the first 10 visits, you should notice a significant decrease in pain and decrease in symptoms. It's a long-term solution once the disc is regrown, it stays grown, unless it gets injured again. So if you're constantly injuring it, and then you get a fix, and then you injure it, well, that's an issue. But if it's from an old injury or an old issue for 20 or 30 years of sitting and it's compressed, once it decompresses the disc, it's now a long-term healthier and better and will do what it needs to do as long as you maintain your spine like dentistry with good spinal hygiene, tiny all-day movement, and regular chiropractic care. Now, I'm going to walk you through the pricing for how it works. First, the average back surgery, do you guys know how much the average spine surgery cost? Around 40000 Now, insurance often pays for a lot of this, but even if you have a 20% copay, it's still 4000 for the copay version of this, plus rehab, plus time off work. So the average cost for 20 decompression sessions between four to 4500 And when we're talking, 
where is the best place to have this done? It was important to me that nutrition is covered, both for what supplements we recommend, as well as how often you need to move, which is around that 8 to 10 miles of all-day movement, or moving for 3 minutes every half an hour with tiny movement. And again, I want to encourage you the importance of chiropractic care as well. The chiropractic adjustment, again, targets specific spinal segments, and it restores them into motion, breaking down scar tissue adhesions within your spinal joints, much like a bodybuilder training from breaking down muscle so that it can grow and thicken. And I think getting adjusted over the course of the decompression treatment is absolutely vital if you want to fully heal and rehydrate your disc. I can't believe most clinicians do not offer chiropractic adjustments along with their decompression program. And as I already explained, our Synergy Response Multifocal Application, eight other interventions that we consider. Again, you're buying the doctor or the clinic, not the tool. The KDT Neuroflex, this specific model of decompression, well, it was important for me to have. I already talked about that. But the ability for the motor to respond to how your body is tightening or relaxing is awesome. So if you're laying on the machine, the motor responds multiple times a second, and it decreases the amount of traction that is put in your body. So it actually senses that from your body's resistance, and it knows when your body relaxes. It slowly begins to pull it. If you tighten up, you know, you feel much like it's too much. The machine is responsive to it, so it's the biofeedback. And it increases the amount that's on it. Again, comparing soda to exotic wine. I know. So in our area in Northwest Indiana, the average price for non-surgical decompression in general is around 3,500, and we wanted to be less than 3,000 for the non-surgical spinal decompression. We wanted to make sure that the people who are serious about it, who want to do it, we want to be able to say, "Hey, we're going to do this for you. We're going to make sure the room is ready, and we're going to make sure our staff." is here and trained and on hand. And I will say this by far. This is the most popular therapy we have in our practice right now. If you have degenerative disc, bulging or herniated disc, sedentary and athletic kids as early as 14 are showing early signs of degenerative disc. So if you're into gymnastics, cheer, basketball, volleyball, you can get a competitive edge, right? This table is kind of like cheating, isn't it? If you need to jump or just feel like your spine is compressed, you just need to decompress it. Chances are, it does. Is it covered by insurance? No. Remember, earlier I said I left decompression for some time because of what other doctors were doing that was giving the field a bad rep. Well, that was charging insurance companies for something they already said they do not cover. They consider the non-surgical spinal decompression as they do plastic surgery. No, it's not covered. The part of the program that is covered is the chiropractic and rehab treatment that go along with the decompression therapy. That's that multifocal application that we employ at the office. So that plan is tailored to each individual as needed based on your history and your exam. I make that determination from those findings and I recommend the appropriate chiropractic care and physiotherapy along with the decompression treatments. And they're new, unique to you. So while I can't predict the total cost for the entire treatment plan, the cash portion of the plan is $2,400 with a few options to get a little discount on that based on which plan you choose. Because depending on how you pay, it saves staff time and other associated fees and costs to us that we're able to give you a little discount. So where I get really excited about this, because when you look at the research, they found an 88% to 90% success rate for non-surgical spinal decompression. And when you really look into that data, as I have, they don't even take into account the things I talked about here, like our multifocal application. They don't look at nutrition the body needs in order to repair and regenerate tissue. They didn't look at how chiropractic adjustments help to repair and regenerate tissue along with the non-surgical spinal decompression treatments, ability to regenerate and fix that hydrostatic mechanism within the disc. They didn't take into play the NASA research, Dr. Joan Vernikos, her work, and um, I had the actually opportunity to chat with her on Facebook about her research. 
just by moving three minutes every half an hour. Her colleague, who is 100 years of age, she healed the broken leg in just two weeks just by moving around every half an hour. Right? They didn't look at the research, the vast research from Mayo Clinic, something called NEAT research. Right? They call it non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or the little tiny movements that we make every day, all day, helps to rebuild and regrow tissue. And why normal spinal segmental motion is necessary to ensure that. So this is where I just, I want to start tearing up, right? Because 10% of you, according to the research, won't get results. But they didn't know what I know. None of that was accounted for in those studies. And I know what you're thinking, but my age, my job, the stress I have. You know, the real doctor said it needs to have surgery. Maybe it does. Maybe you're that 10% won't help. Look, I'm confident that adding the nutrition, avoiding re-injury, don't do stupid things at work or at home, getting the nutritional support you need, paying attention to how often and how well you move all day long with tiny movement, maintaining your spinal hygiene with spinal hygiene exercises you do every time you brush your teeth. You do this one stretch I teach. It takes one minute to do twice a day. Like you wash your hands twice a day, I hope. You brush your teeth twice a day, I hope. And you do this one little stretch after you brush your teeth, along with regularly checking your spine with a chiropractor checkup. And continue to maintain your spine and prevent further injury. So look, if I think that you're a candidate for this machine, I've looked at your radiology studies, I've examined you, and I feel you're a candidate for this treatment. I want to get you to the 100% mark or as close to it as possible. If you do all these things that I'm suggesting, I'm going to make it simple and practical for you. Anyone can do this. I don't care if you're 88 years old to 100 years old, as long as you don't fall into that category I talked about earlier. You can move a little bit every day, all day long. You can come in here and lay down on the table and let the machine do the work for you. You can come in here and lay down on the chiropractic table over there and let me do the physical body work that you need. As I see fit, the only way you're not going to be the 90% is if you do something really stupid and you re-injure it, either on your job or at home. If you don't pay attention to moving more all day long in tiny ways, get off your butt every half an hour and move a bit for three minutes. But I'm not leaving you wondering. We're going to work together with what your job is, how you lift, and how you do things. We're going to look at your injury. What is it? We're going to figure out a treatment plan that you can feel safe, that, so that when you're on a job, you can feel safe when you're at home. And at the same point, same point, why some, we're not lose weight in the process, right? Maybe add a little muscle a bit. How's that sound? You know, a 2007 New Zealand study in the Journal of Neurophysiology by my colleague and friend, Dr. Hadi Havlik, offers some interesting insight to what a chiropractic adjustment can do. In this study, well, researchers discovered that just one adjustment was radically altering the brain in a positive manner. The chiropractic adjustment affected the neurology to the brain unlike anything else that has ever been seen because of that mechanoreceptive stimulation. In other words, the researchers found that one adjustment has an effect on growth and repair of muscle and then strength to a motor unit that you would get in three to four weeks of weight training. I mean, why should I stop fixing you? Only when the pain stops. Let's create a new you. Listen, until you're six feet under the ground, your tissues and cells always regenerates. That's physiology 101. We're either building up or we're breaking down in life. And that gets determined by what you eat and how well and how often you move your body all day long. And now that we know the science behind how to build the disc up, thanks to NASA and gravity studies, I have the honor to meet the most decorated astronaut in our history who happens to be in our backyard, Crown Point, Indiana, and who has the most time in space, who knows the most to what gravity deprivation syndrome and immobility and sedentary lifestyle and sitting disease and the effect that has. Now you get the opportunity to feel what space feels like. I'm kidding. Not exactly. Jerry didn't even want me to talk about what he experienced when he suffered the devastating effects 
from what they term gravity deprivation syndrome. I think it's, I think it's a bit like asking a vet about, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. You just wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I want to make sure that this is a successful experience for you. And I know I'm going to make it a successful experience for me. They're all. I'm very passionate about what I do, as you can tell. And I want to get you better. Listen, guys, I'm in it for myself. When I feel your spine and make you better, it makes me feel better. It gives me purpose and mission. It heals and restores me because I can't bring dead people back to life. But I certainly can help living people lighten up, move better, and live fuller. And honestly, that's what makes me look good, feel good, and that's what I'm in it for. So I can only be as honest as I possibly can. And I know this is selfish of me. My goal is to get you better, maybe even looking younger than you were before you came in to see me. Chronic pain just ages you. It sucks. It's not fair to you, especially your kids, because again, it makes me feel really good and I'm being selfish. But doctors are taught wrong. We're taught to reduce down to the single pathway or the single mechanism. But that's not how nature works. We're not a summary of our parts down to the single atom. We are a series of complex systems and circuits hardwired between multiple paths of existence and mechanisms that interlock and play more numerous than the stars in space. A single star out of place might have a gravitational and magnetic effect that impacts the entire universe and we have no way to understand the complexity of it all. Your neck, low back, nerve pain is a part of a complex and incomprehensible and vast as our universe in which we live. When we say the pain you're having, well, it's a dispain. The real question is, why? See, we have spinal alignment, posture, normal spinal motion, and how much your body needs to move to consider. How that lack of movement or injury impacts your soft tissues, your muscles, ligaments, tendons, fascia, and how that nerve signaling in your central nervous system is affected, your cell function, like myelin production and collagen formation, or how your organs are functioning, right down to the very expression of your DNA. See, the table is only a tool. It's the operator behind it that matters. It's knowing when and why and how in relation to all these things in a holistic manner. It's like comparing a famous painting from Italy in the 17th century with my six-year-old's painting using the same tools. This is how complex and personalized our approach is. This is not to say that you know, you've tried non-surgical spinal decompression in another office. And if you come here, maybe our approach will be the tipping point for you. Yes, that's been the case in some cases here. But it might not be the decompression itself that is the answer for you. It may be from our multifocal approach. Maybe you don't even need decompression at all. It might be a simple change of chiropractic technique, a different approach, or a new touch. That's what's improved it for you. So, yes, I think the KDT Neuroflex table is the Swiss army knife of all the tables because this is the fourth table I've operated and I won't go back to the others because of all the things I've talked about. It's the clinical experience of the doctor and the staff in dealing with these issues in over 10,000 patient visits we see each year that gives us the edge and the mastery over these issues. See, just like an artist or a martial artist, a chiropractor is much the same way. I take like Bruce Lee style approach, right? Gather the strengths from the other techniques, the other healing arts, and expose their weaknesses and come up with a brand new style. That's what Bruce Lee did for martial arts. And I think it's genius. It's the single reason we get better every year at what we do, both with the new discoveries, the breakthroughs, and the novel ways and techniques to treat. So together with NASA gravity studies and immobility studies, Mayo Clinic's NEAT studies to biomechanics, the chiropractic research out of New Zealand, to the emerging field called mechanobiology. We link up all those various sciences and the applications in a new way, and we're getting amazing results. So come on in and see it for yourself. Now, I just met a guy at the gym. He's in his early 60s. He's lifting weight like he's 20. He's had two shoulder replacements and four back surgeries. I kid you not. And he's bragging like he's not supposed to be there doing this. He's lifting the same weight this 20-year-old kid with huge bulky arms was lifting in his 60s, and his arms were flimsy. They were atrophied from those surgeries. He's numbed up from eight different medications, 
really crazy stupid. Don't be that guy. I mean, even if you don't reach the four-year long-term success rate, which was over 70% with non-surgical spinal decompression, and we need to go through the protocols a second time, it ain't surgery, guys. That guy had four back surgeries and two new surgeries on his way for a fifth surgery the way he's working out. And what was the cost? Not only financially for him, two divorces, three kids that want nothing to do with them, and a long-term disability. It's crazy. So if you're sincere and you're serious about this, stop worrying about how you're going to come up with that $4,000 copay for a back surgery that may or may not help. You're paying a whole lot less going the natural route with an 88 to 90% success rate with a better long-term success rate over surgery for sure. You need to give us a call right now. Get that new patient visual scheduled and we can set this up for you. Get moving forward. Let's get you moving. I know you're a great person. Pain has got a hold of you. Your kiddos don't understand. I want you to wrestle with those kiddos again. Be in a better mood. Be pain-free. And maybe get off those medications. So let me help. God bless.